A merchant bank is a financial institution that provides capital to companies in the form of share ownership instead of loans. A merchant bank also provides advisory on corporate matters to the firms they lend to. In the United Kingdom, the term merchant bank refers to an investment bank. Today, according to the U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the term merchant banking is generally understood to mean negotiated private equity investment by financial institutions in the unregistered securities of either privately or publicly held companies. Both commercial banks and investment banks may engage in merchant banking activities. Historically, merchant banks' original purpose was to facilitate and or finance production and trade of commodities, hence the name merchant. Few banks today restrict their activities to such a narrow scope. History Merchant banks are in fact the original banks. These were invented in the Middle Ages by Italian grain merchants. As the Lombardy merchants and bankers grew in stature based on the strength of the Lombard Plains cereal crops, many displaced Jews fleeing Spanish persecution were attracted to the trade. They brought with them ancient practices from the Middle and Far East silk routes. Originally intended for the finance of long trading journeys, these methods were applied to finance the production and trading of grain. In France during the 17th and 18th century, a merchant banker or merchant banquier was not just considered a trader but also received the status of being an entrepreneur par excellence. Merchant banks in the United Kingdom came into existence in the early 19th century, the oldest being Bering's Bank. The Jews could not hold land in Italy, so they entered the great trading piazzas and halls of Lombardy, alongside the local traders, and set up their benches to trade in crops. They had one great advantage over the locals. Christians were strictly forbidden the sin of usury, defined as lending at interest. The Jewish newcomers, on the other hand, could lend to farmers against crops in the field, a high-risk loan at what would have been considered usurious rates by the church. But the Jews were not subject to the church's dictates. In this way they could secure the grain sale rights against the eventual harvest. They then began to advance payment against the future delivery of grain shipped to distant ports. In both cases they made their profit from the present discount against the future price. This two-handed trade was time-consuming and soon there arose a class of merchants who were trading grain debt instead of grain. The court Jew performed both financing and underwriting functions. Financing took the form of a crop loan at the beginning of the growing season, which allowed a farmer to develop and manufacture his annual crop. Underwriting in the form of a crop, or commodity, Insurance guaranteed the delivery of the crop to its buyer, typically a merchant wholesaler. In addition, traders performed the merchant function by making arrangements to supply the buyer of the crop through alternative sources or euro grain stores or alternate markets, for instance a euro in the event of crop failure. He could also keep the farmer in business during a drought or other crop failure, through the issuance of a crop insurance against the hazard of failure of his crop. Merchant banking progressed from financing trade on one's own behalf to settling trades for others and then to holding deposits for settlement of billet, or notes written by the people who were still brokering the actual grain. And so the merchants' benches in the great grain markets became centers for holding money against a bill. These deposited funds were intended to be held for the settlement of grain trades, but often were used for the benches' own trades in the meantime. The term bankrupt is a corruption of the Italian banker rotta, or broken bench, which is what happened when someone lost his trader's deposits. Being broke has the same connotation. A sensible manner of discounting interest to the depositors against what could be earned by employing their money in the trade of the bench soon developed. In short, selling an interest to them in a specific trade, thus overcoming the usury objection. Once again this merely developed what was an ancient method of financing long-distance transport of goods. The medieval Italian markets were disrupted by wars and in any case were limited by the fractured nature of the Italian states. And so the next generation of bankers arose from migrant Jewish merchants in the great wheat-growing areas of Germany and Poland. Many of these merchants were from the same families who had been part of the development of the banking process in Italy. They also had links with family members who had, centuries before, fled Spain for both Italy and England. 
As non-agricultural wealth expanded, many families of goldsmiths also gradually moved into banking. This course of events set the stage for the rise of Jewish family banking firms whose names still resonate today, such as Warburgs and Rothschilds. The rise of Protestantism, however, freed many European Christians from Rome's dictates against usury. In the late 18th century, Protestant merchant families began to move into banking to an increasing degree, especially in trading countries such as the United Kingdom, Germany and the Netherlands. At the same time, new types of financial activities broadened the scope of banking far beyond its origins. The merchant banking families dealt in everything from underwriting bonds to originating foreign loans. For instance, bullion trading and bond issuance were two of the specialities of the Rothschilds. In 1803, Bearings teamed with Hope and Company to facilitate the Louisiana Purchase. In the 19th century, the rise of trade and industry in the U.S. led to powerful new private merchant banks, culminating in J.P. Morgan and Company. During the 20th century, however, the financial world began to outgrow the resources of family-owned and other forms of private equity banking. Corporations came to dominate the banking business. For the same reasons, merchant banking activities became just one area of interest for modern banks. Here is a list of merchant banks of the past and present, Bearings Bank, Berenberg Bank, BDT Capital Partners, N. M. Rothschild & Sons, George Peabody & Company. Klinwert Benson, Guinness Mahon, Schroeders, J. S. Morgan & Company, Hope & Company, Defoe Fournier & C. Close Brothers, Morgan Grenfell & Company, Green Hill & Company, Robert Fleming & Company, Kuhn, Loeb & Company, Humbrose Bank, Hill Samuel, Brown Brothers Harriman & Company, Samuel Montague & Company, H. J. Merck & Company, Modern practices, known as a Euro OE capting and issuing hoosh a Euro in the UK and a Euro OE investment banks a Euro in the US. Modern merchant banks offer a wide range of activities, including issue management, portfolio management, credit syndication, acceptance credit, counsel on mergers and acquisitions, insurance, etc. Of these two classes of merchant banks, the US variant initiates loans and then sells them to investors. Even though some of these companies call themselves merchant banks, they are few, if any, of the characteristics of former merchant banks. See also, investment bank, list of finance topics, list of international trade topics, references. Further reading, Ferris, Paul. Gentlemen of Fortune, The World's Merchant and Investment Bankers. London, Weidenfeld and Felden Nicholson. ISBN A 0 297 78380 7. A. Exberg, Joseph. The Merchant Bankers. Boston, Little, Browner, O'Sullivan, M.D. Italian Merchant Bankers in Ireland in the 13th Century A Study in the Social and Economic History of Medieval Ireland. Dublin, A. Figgeser, Rosenbaum, Duard. M. M. Warburg and Company, Merchant Bankers of Hamburg. A Survey of the First 140 Years, 1798-1938. London A. 